Now, like I had mentioned before, InDesign came out after Illustrator, so it borrowed a lot of Illustrator features. That's why, like I said, if you are comfortable with a little working knowledge of Illustrator, you're gonna do okay in InDesign. If you've never worked in Illustrator, but you're in my class, no problem either. You're gonna do fine, okay? I just always make those analogies because of the history of knowing how these programs have developed over the years. So just like Illustrator, just like Photoshop, InDesign, you're gonna be working with layers as well. So I'm gonna to go to File and Open. Remember, Open is to open a pre-existing InDesign file, not a photo. I'll go to my Chapter 2 demos right here, Concepts. Folder number two is Layers, and I'll open up this InDesign file. And right here, I've got a stack of objects. Okay, at first glance, notice how every object is indicated by a red, thin stroke or a frame indicator. Okay, these do not have red outlines. Remember, if I hit the letter W, they're actually painted with black outlines. Okay, so if they have a black outline and I hit W, why are they showing up as red? So what you need to do is keep your layers panel in mind. I'm gonna tear that out. And just like Adobe Illustrator, anything you put on a layer is indicated by the color of the anchor points on that layer. So this layer called shapes is indicated with red anchor points or red frame edges. Those colors allow you to differentiate between objects on different layers. So notice when I click this sheet or this little button to create a new layer, now anything on this layer will have blue anchor points. Anything on this layer will have green anchor points. Anything on this layer will have dark blue anchor points. Anything on this layer will have pink or magenta anchor points. So let's see, how many objects do we have? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now I got five layers. So I'm gonna name these layers. I'm gonna call layer five by double clicking the name, yellow rectangle. Okay, and I'm gonna make a layer for every object. We'll call this one uh, magenta rectangle. I'll double click this layer and we'll call that orange circle. <clears throat> double click this layer, let's call that green polygon. And the final layer, instead of calling that shape, so I'm gonna double click the name and we'll call that blue blob. Okay, but when I take my black arrow and I select everything the only layer that lights up is the bottom layer because I drew everything on the same layer now I don't want to tear it all apart and start all over again I've already drawn my shapes I just happen to accidentally draw them all on the same layer so what I want to do is repurpose these objects I want to move them to their correct layers so notice if I click once outside, then I click once on the yellow, this will highlight. It tells me I have indicated that I have selected something on this layer. It's just on the blue blob layer. That yellow rectangle should be way up here. So when you click on an object, it will jump down to the layer. It will indicate that there is something selected on that layer and you can click and drag that indicator and push it up so now it's on the yellow rectangle layer. And I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna move everything to its proper layers. I'm gonna click on the magenta rectangle, which again is way down here. I wanna push that back up. Click on the orange, and I wanna push that up to orange circle. Click on this green object and push it up. Now the problem is, my layers are all out of whack. This yellow rectangle should go behind everything. But what you have to really keep in mind is you can only stack things above or below on their respective layers. 
I cannot click on this and go to object, arrange, and send it to the back. Okay, the only thing on this layer is one object. If I am on the yellow rectangle, InDesign is ignoring all these guys. So if I have to physically move this layer, this object under everything, I have to take the entire layer and pull it down. Tuck the entire layer underneath. If I wanted this orange circle to go above the magenta rectangle, I can't go to object, arrange, and bring it in front. It's grayed out. The only thing I can bring it to the front of is other objects on that same layer. Okay, so just to prove that, I'm gonna go click here and let's go in with another ellipse. I'll just draw one that kind of overlaps it like that. Okay, if I wanted these two to be the same color, I could click with my black arrow, take my eyedropper and click on the orange. There we go. But I want the large one to sit in front of this one, not this way. So if I have two objects on the same layer, then I can click and say object arrange and bring it in front of the smaller one like that but it only goes in front of objects on the same layer. Okay, you can click and say object arrange, or if I wanted this one to sit below, every layer has a little triangle. Every layer acts like a folder. And when I click that triangle, I can open up the folder basically and see what I've drawn. Okay, this is a perfect circle, so it is indicated as a circle. This was drawn more as a oval, so it is indicated as an oval. But I want the big circle to go behind the oval. So I can just pull this bar right down to that thin gray line and tuck it behind. You can do it that way too. The only thing is when you start to do this, when you start to click these triangles, you're gonna have a huge kind of confusing mess on your layers panel. So if you do that, which is certainly capable, close the triangle at the end. You don't want these big messes really confusing your working progress. So again, if I wanted this orange above the magenta, I would have to take the orange circle layer and move the entire layer up right to that gray line right there. Okay, there we go. So keep in mind, layers can be opened so you can see the objects. Layers can be moved so I can move that magenta behind or move the entire layer up. You're just going to move it right to these gray bars. There we go. And the other thing you can do, just as a side note, instead of calling this circle an oval, Let's see, if I click on this and just shrink it down to another oval, see it won't, oh, there you go, it will change. It's automatically linked. What I do here is linked to what I'm doing here, but how can I tell the difference between one oval and the next? Well, I can't, and that's gonna be really confusing. So if I'm not sure which one is which, I can turn the eyeball off and say, okay, the bigger oval should be this one, there we go. I can double click the name, see if I can rename that. Okay, there we go, it was just slow. Double click and call that bigger oval. So now I can at least tell the difference between the two. So when I toggle this, I don't have to have any confusion. Oh, the bigger oval's down here, okay. And now I can move that up and move it in front. So you can double click a name, you gotta wait a second. I think you click it once, then double click. Come on, double click. I know I can get this to name again. Come on, there we go. Okay, just gotta be careful with it. I think it's just click once, there you go. Click once and wait a second, don't double click. Click once, click once and wait a second, there you go. Otherwise, it's gonna drive you nuts. So just be aware of that, I'm glad I opened this up. So if I wanted to call this, um, Let's see, six sided polygon. Click it once to select. Click once and wait a second. 
now I can call it six sided polygon. Okay, you just gotta be a little patient with InDesign. So that's how your layers panel is gonna work here in InDesign. I can take this tab, put it right back up in there. When I get a blue outline, I'm ready to drop it into this little group of panels there. And we'll just slide it back where it was, close up this file and I'll move on.